Hello, this is Adelaide Eternal and you're with Sarvan McClinton bringing you more Australian Highlander deck discussion. If you're just starting out, these seven overviews of seven Highlander archetypes might help you decide on your new deck. And if you're an existing player, this video keeps you in the loop on the wide variety of powerful options in the diverse Australian Highlander metagame. If you are interested in any of these seven decks that we overview here, just comment below with the name of the deck and we'll dedicate a full seven minute deck tech to it in an upcoming seven minute seven point series video. Now, let's continue with Blue Red Tempo. It's affectionately referred to as Dr. Seuss, and it is a Delver deck. In this deck, you'll find that the one drops are the most important part. Delver of Secrets, Goblin Guide, Monastery Swift Spear, Zergo Bell Striker, you'd just love to see these in your opening hand. And after that, you can try and generate some value off your two drops. Cards like Abbot of Carol Keep, Jace Vrin's Prodigy, and Young Pyromancer at two as well. These are all great ways to generate value to keep you in the game and keep burning your opponent's face. So burn is its secondary strategy. If you can't get there by beats, you might just have them down at a low enough life total to burn them out of the game. You can also use Is It Charm and Remand to interact with them on the stack just enough and just long enough to hold them down and ensure that they die in a blaze of fire. So the points can often be spent in either Time Walk or Ancestral Recall. Either you take an extra turn to swing for lethal or you draw three cards to draw the amount of burn you need to ensure that you get those last few points of damage in. On to the Hermit Druid combo deck. Hermit Druid is extremely important in this deck, but you can also find other ways to fill up your graveyard. So Cephalid Illusionist and any of the Encore creatures, Nomad's Encore, Shaman Encore, Warrior Encore, are a great way to mill yourself repeatedly for three until you get the right configuration in your graveyard. You can use your reanimation spells to get out a really huge Lord of Extinction, or you can have Mimeoplasm make a bizarre combination of creature with useful abilities and plus one plus one counters. Tutors in the deck are very important, obviously Sylvan Tutor and Vampiric Tutor putting cards on the top of your deck, like Worldly Tutor too, but you can also get powerful tutors like Illidamri's Call, which essentially functions like a demonic tutor in this deck. Gamble is also useful, filling up your graveyard when you need it, and Imperial Recruiter finds most of the pieces of the combo. You usually finish off with a reanimate spell, like reanimate, unearth, or postmortem lunge, and that'll tie up the game. The next deck we'll talk about is the Four Color Deathblade deck, which is named after the Legacy Stoneforge Mystic Deathrite Shaman combo. The difference here is that in a Highlander format, you have to find your singletons to make up the slots, and that's why you end up seeing great spells like Inquisition of Kozilek alongside Thoughtseize, alongside Him to Turak, and the powerful Mind Twist. You also have the pleasure of playing the three best planeswalkers in the game, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Elspeth, Knight Errant, and Liliana the Veil, alongside powerful three drops like Anafens of the Foremost, Geist of Saint Traft, and obviously one of your great reasons to splash green alongside Deathrite Shaman is Leovold, Emissary of Trest. If that didn't sound great to you already, you can also use that green on a Traxa Praetor's voice. Not only is she a beat stick, but she can proliferate counters, and the occasional Anafenza plus one plus one counter or Jitter counters wouldn't go astray, not to mention the powerful planeswalkers that you have. The next deck we'll talk about is Lands. So it has the same parsimonious name as Legacy and is casually referred to as Burke's Backyard in this format. The win con is obviously the Dark Depths combo, and you can actually play a little bit of a mid-range game because you get Corsair of Crufix, Knight of the Reliquary, Primeval Titan, Tireless Tracker, Titania. All of these cards can easily win you the game by taking over through sheer value. The recursion package involves Life from the Loam, Crucible of Worlds as well, and you also have the speed package involving fast spawn and exploration to power out those lands as quickly as possible. If you find that whichever deck you play, you end up getting mana screwed, this is probably the deck for you. With its high land count, you're probably never missing a land drop. On to Grixis Control. So this is one of the premier control decks in the format, and it can win via its powerful win cons like Tassiga the Golden Fang, Torrential Gear Hulk, or Gurmag Angler. But it can also play the control game, playing a threat early like Creeping Tar Pit, Wandering Fumarole, and only using it later on in the game. The value package involves Colligan's Command, Electrolyze, Cryptic Command, Mystical Teachings to find some of these powerhouses, Mystic Confluence, Fiery Confluence, the list goes on, but it all gets topped off with Cruel Ultimatum. If you haven't resolved a Cruel Ultimatum before, you need to play this deck. It is 
disgusting. The next deck we'll talk about is Burn. In Legacy, it's an elegant deck list with a whole bunch of four ofs, but in Highlander, we need to use eclectic choices to maintain consistency in our one drop slots, our two drop slots, and so on. So if you've ever wanted to play Kelden Marauders and Hellspark Elemental, but they've never made the cut in your other formats, then this is the deck for you. The deck operates on sheer speed and consistency, aiming to burn your opponent out before they can stabilize after turn four. Since nothing is pointed in mono red decks, you have the pleasure of playing Mox Ruby and Black Lotus alongside your less than $100 deck to enjoy the free wins that they give you from sheer speed alone. The last deck we'll talk about is the Green White Ramp deck that's often referred to as Elf D with the L and the D capitalized to stand for land destruction. We've covered this type of deck before, but the key difference here is obviously the land destruction plan. Alongside your strip mine and wasteland, you get to play cool cards like Ice Storm, which is a stone rain for green, and Beast Within. Knowing when to beast within your opponent's land is a key feature of the skill intensity of this deck, but you'll notice that if you are on the play and you lead off with a mana dork and then you Ice Storm their land and they don't have acceleration, it's gonna be a bad day for them because you can ramp your way into one of the great big fatties that we've talked about in other green white ramp decks including Terastodon, which also destroys your opponent's lands or makes you an army of elephants some versions of the list have also been known to splash black for mind twist and an early mind twist off a bunch of mana dorks is absolutely disgusting if you're interested in any one of these cool seven decks that we've overviewed here just comment below with the name of the deck and we'll dedicate a full seven minute deck tech to it in an upcoming seven minute seven point series video thanks for listening guys